Yo, man, Shregs. I'm with Mike Powers right now. Turn everything the f off. Tune in. Let's get it together. For my real hip hop heads only. If you've been tapping in like you're supposed to, you know I came across my next guest when the song and video for Extendo threatened to put me into what the NFL has properly dubbed the concussion protocol. If you don't have any idea what I'm talking about, welcome to the most important hip hop show on this vast mainframe called the internet. Falcon Outlaw is a figure that exists in the shadows of Toronto's underground. A combination of tough street wisdom and outright threats to crush those who might pay him less than the proper amount of respect is only a portion of what you are likely to be bombarded with should you have the wherewithal to gift yourself the proper study. Class is in session and the syllabus is on the screen. It's powers and the outlaw. The northern invasion of 2020 has come full circle. On the heels of breakout efforts from Danielson, Asan Eastwood, Raz Fresco, and others, Falcon Outlaw completes the circle of Canadian griminess, infecting the culture at a rate exponentially more lethal than COVID-19. Hear me clearly, family. Bars are on deck. And the man on the left side of your screen is an artist like no other that has come before. I stand on that 10 toes inside the 10 bows. And so I have no other choice but to say that it gives me great pleasure to welcome for the first time on the Mike Power Show, Toronto's guardian of the darkness and number one on the Department of Homeland Security's list of most dangerous imports, high heat records own beef eradication system. The man, the myth, and the absolute truth in word and deed. Ladies and gentlemen, Falcon Outlaw is in the building. Yo, fam, you make me feel like Batman, fam. What bomba cloud. Big up. Bat, bat, bat. Big thing. All right. I, sh I feel like I should have ducked right there. Um. <laughs> always sending shots. Always. Verbal shots, you know? Always verbal shots, fam. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate you showing up. Uh, this is quite the moment on the Mike Power Show. I will tell you that I came across the video for Extendo, quite honestly, by mistake. Uh, when I clicked it, I was instantly mesmerized. I was taken to another place. I listened to what was going on with the lyrics. You get mad busy on there. I brought it to the people on IG. They went bananas. Uh, I'm glad their ears wasn't broke. So it's been a long time coming trying to get you on the program. I'm finally, uh, I'm glad we were finally able to, to make this happen. So thank you, sir, for blessing us with your presence. Big up. Hey, hey, let's get right into it. I know you from Toronto uh, and you have uh, one of the best videos of the year when we talk about Extendo. Um, beyond that, I don't know much except that Danielson, shout to Danielson, uh, he said, you got to talk to this guy. Uh, so let's get right to it. You're, you're Jamaican, right? Born in Toronto. All of my people them are Jamaican. Every friend that I grew up with is Jamaican. Everybody in my family going way back. Got you get me? And then Via from Jamaica, it veers off to Africa because you don't know about the slave trade thing. You get me? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So born and raised in Toronto. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this. What was your upbringing like? Fuck. You know, I will, you know, it's a regular kid born into some immigrant parents. You get me? Trying to make their way in a new world, in a new society and bring up youths the right way. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, everything was good. You know, my peeps made me out a good childhood that I remember. I don't have any horror stories as a youth. You get me? They were about thing, you know? And um, 
as you come to yourself as a youth, as a teenager, and you kind of leave the nest, the world either carries you one way or the next, you know? Got you. Kind of that's where everything kind of turned upside down. You get what I'm saying? When you say turned upside down, you mean that in what way? Like, it kind of almost happened for me and all of my friends that I grew up with at the same time that, like, you really get to touch the road and fully get to express your version of the culture, what it, what it is being a black youth mm. growing up in them time, yeah. Yeah. In this, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. When you touch the road on your own for the first time, it's not like you're walking with your dad or your mom on the street. Like you're walking by yourself and the boy them come harass you. Like, what are you doing? You get me? Yeah. So a leap of first time thing I had to deal with, like, why playing basketball and there's a couple white youths on the court, but why did the boy them only harassing the black youth them? You get me? Yes. Yeah. You know, that's what I mean by like things kind of turn upside down. You know, I, I guess like on a real talk, I probably just realized that I was a black youth because as a youth growing up, you're just a youth. You get me? Yes. But it touched the road. There's a time. Everybody know that. There's a time when you realize that you're a black youth. And it means something in, in this world, yeah. you know what I mean? And I think that's important. It, it's a reminder that on a global scale, um, descendants of slaves and, and, and black people all across the globe is kind of experiencing the, uh, the same thing, that we have more uh, in common than our differences, I believe. Yeah, man, real talk, you know? Absolutely. And what was the, let me ask you this, what was the, what was the first thing that you remember wanting to become? As you were a child growing up, a lot of people want to be uh, firemen, astronauts. What did you want to be? What was your first memory of what you wanted to be early on? Um, I guess, you know, I wanted to be somebody of some kind of importance, you know, like growing up, my dad was like a, top youth about the place, you know? Like the parties used to always be at my crib. My uncle was like a dapper, you know what I mean? What's a dapper? Like a shatter. You get what I mean, dude? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and him play a song and them thing there. So it's more like, you know, I wanted to kind of emulate my peeps them, you know? Yeah. And then if you're talking school-wise, it's more of a thing like, probably all a brain surgeon. That's what I used to be thinking of when I was a youth still. You so get you, me? You, and I was, nice. I was nice at school, you know? Okay. So you wanted to be a brain surgeon? Yeah. Or, it may, or a DJ? You got me. <laughs> brain surgeon, DJ. Which one? And now we have a okay. dude that's well on his way to becoming an international hip-hop superstar right here. So... Uh, we met somewhere in the middle. You would apply some of that brain surgery to the lyrics. I see. I see. <laughs> hey, um, what was the most uh, difficult transition from uh, being a boy to a man? Um, I noticed that my mom didn't look at me the same again. You get me? Not like in a bad way, but she knew this isn't the same youth that I grew up in the house that I used to sit down and give cereal and watch cartoons. Mm. You know, I have to let him touch the road and find himself kind of thing. You get what, you get what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And same time, my peeps noticed that I noticed that. You get me? Yeah. Yeah. So that was, it was the, yeah. transition. Yeah, getting off the porch, getting out on your own, leaving the nest, that would have been the most difficult part of the transition. Yeah, yeah, big time. And when did when was it that you decide to pursue hip-hop? Well, that coincides to the album that I just dropped, West Detention, you get me? Yep. So when I was a youth, um, I got myself in some trouble, you get me? As some youths do. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
and um, I ended up locked up. And I was locked up in the jailhouse in Toronto called West Detention. It, at that time there was a school out of Hard Knocks. It was probably the worst place in probably all of Canada to get locked up as a youth. See? Mm. Everybody in there was like animals. You, you get what I mean, David? So, as I'm going through that now, and um, I ended up on a different range and whatever, whatever, doing my time. And there was a quiet room outside of the each range. You get me? Because I, when, when, you're, when you're in the youth thing, they're still trying to rehabilitate you. You get me? You get me, man, David? Yeah. They're still trying to save the youth them. So they have a quiet room where if the youths them behave, they can go in there and listen to music, play cassettes, and just hang out, get away from the unit. You get me? So... I never really got the chance to go in there, but one of the guards them that I was kind of cool with, seeing he was cool with all of the bad boy them, and the man let me go in the quiet room one time, see? And um, there was a youth um, lifting on you stuff. I'll never forget their names, you get me? Mm -hmm. They were the only youth them in there, and they were um, and they were like, yo, fam, you got to listen to this shit. And like, they put on Mob Deep and... That was like the first time we really even taken in hip hop like that, and yeah. instantly like that changed everything. Mm. Listening to that musically, you get what I'm saying? It absolutely changed and, me too. And, yeah, and the way the story goes too. Even that, those two youths that introduced me, you can kind of say to like almost hip hop. Both of them end up dying in the street. You get me? Mm. Yeah. So it's a story that only I can pass on. They can't even tell you like. That story, because they're not here no more. You get me? Yes, yes. But, yeah, and, you know, it, it. the words hit me a different way, because it's like, yo, these guys are talking about how me and some youths are living. Even some of the way, even some of my ops are living. That was the thing. It was just like it just captured what black youths on the street level was going through. You get what I'm doing? And right. I'm like, yo, I felt like I, I could do my thing. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you... um. So you you was in the place uh, West Detention, which I'm I'm set to talk about that here in a second. I got a list of questions here. I always do, but um, you said it was probably the worst place as a as a youth to get locked up in Canada. You must have had um, some kind of ups and downs and and run-ins when you was in there. Can you maybe talk about um, maybe one of the worst moments while you was in West Detention, like to take us uh, inside of what it was like for you? All right. You make me remember one thing, see? All right. So I was there at this point where the story, I'm going to tell you, I was there for already a year, see? Gotcha. You know, depending on how you deal with the thing, you end up becoming like a big man in other place, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, when people come on the new unit, thing mans used to do, just foolishness we used to do as youths, you know? We would, like, be locked up in our cell at nighttime, and the new, we know there's new youths coming on the unit, and we would, like, scream from our cell to their cell, like, yo, do this and do that, or else bear things are going tomorrow. So, boom, I'm at the end of the unit, Zine, in my cell, all right? And um, same, same, same situation I'm telling you. So I'm screaming to these new youths, these two young youths that came in. I'm telling them, yo, flood the unit, flood your toilet, or else tomorrow's bear, bear problem, you know? Yeah. Stupid shit. So the youth them end up flooded, and it end up flooding the whole entire range. See? Yeah. So because I'm the one that tell them, I go take a towel, and I put a towel at the bottom of my door so my cell don't get no water. See? Right. So it's the things like youth used to do just to cause trouble in the place and give the guards a hard time. But what I didn't notice, the same time I'm there shouting through my cell door, telling them that because I'm at the end of the unit, see, I'm over here. Right beside my door is an outside door to the hallway corridor. You get me? Yeah. And the sergeant was standing there listening to me the whole fucking time. I don't know if I'm allowed to curse, fam. Yeah, Sorry. absolutely. So... The man was watching me the whole time. The man, I'm up my cell. Boom, the man opened my cell door. I jump off my bed. I'm like, yo, my cell's dry. Boom, boom, man, I'm punched me in my face. Beat me up. Hog tie me. See? You know how hog tie is when they put you on your belly and tie up your hand and your feet? Yeah. And I'm hog tie me, and that's when I was in the cell. The sergeant's telling me, yo, I was listening to you the whole time. 
blah, 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 blah. The man them grabbed me and dragged me through the water, through the whole unit, and told everybody on the unit while they're dragging me, like, yo, for any of you motherfuckers that think you guys run this shit, we run this shit. Look at blah, 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 blah. And they dragged me and put me in the hole. That whole night, they left me hog tied in the hole the whole night. And I had to do a month in the hole because of that. Whoa. Me probably at 16. So, and I'm sitting there now in the hole. Stupid, young, dumb, just trying to find his way, looking out the bar window saying, fuck, my friend them who took a different path, they're probably like playing basketball right now at school or hanging out with the girls. And I'm here sitting in my boxers locking the hole. You get me? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's um, that's a a, a, a cautionary tale. <laughs> uh, and I like, you kind of do that throughout the music where, you know, yeah. the music is grimy, but you, you, you really bring it home, making it real for people. You kind of tell both sides of the story. And I do appreciate that. Um, what kind of response is Extendo getting for you? A couple months before Extendo dropped, I was recording a lot. You get me? Yeah. And I um, started to pick certain tunes that I wanted to drop to see all oh, the masses are going to react to it. You get me? Different type of style type of thing, you know? Yes. And um, we broke water with everybody when we dropped Destro's Bitch. Mm, yeah. Got a crazy response for that. And then me and my people were like, yo, it's them style that them want, you know? Them, them style, yeah. So I went back in the studio and then we created Extendo. And yeah, when it dropped, it's just like my Instagram numbers went up. My Twitter numbers went up went up producers reaching out to me went up so i guess the thing really resonated with 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 people you get me yeah hey and and i want to talk about this real quick because it might be in my notes if it's not i gotta say it now because I, i'll forget and i will be upset about it um it's difficult for me to accurately describe your music so for people that are not aware what i want to say is it's grimy, but it's on a different kind of grimy. It kind of, you talk about Mob Deep, which a little bit of that influence you can kind of hear, but you stretch the genre out. It's some singing going on in some of these uh, cuts. Um, it's a lot to me because of obviously the accent and the way you do it has got this, this reggae element to it. Um, not so much, obviously, the music of it, but just the, the cadence of it and, and how you do it. I think that it extends what people are ready to digest in this current climate of what we see now with the, with the rock Marcianos and the Griselda and, you know, Ito and Flea and, and other people like that, even the Daniel son, um, it stretches the genre out. Uh, I appreciate uh, you and the team jumping off of that cliff. And, and being true to what you wanted to do, because I think you blessed us with something that's wholly unique. It's incredible to listen to, especially if you're smoking. My God. Uh, I'm, I don't want to run on for so long. I want to get right through these questions because uh, I got a lot I want to ask you. Um, oh, my goodness. Uh, you got a song called Falcon Outlaw is a Killer. Um, Whoa. Now, I'm not going to ask who the lucky guy or guys was in the video because <laughs> you got all these pics on the wall of these guys that you about to go handle, I presume. My question is, for real, how many ops you got out there right now and how sticky is it for you in the streets? Well, without diving too deep because I know the boy them are going to probably watch this thing, but, you know, we... um. Yeah, you know, it's an issue. You get what I mean, David? Yeah. I have issues with people on certain sets and some of the people that I'm linked with mm. have deep issues with certain sets and, you know, it's it, it's hard to walk away from the thing. You know, I know a lot of youths, like, just get to go to the studio and rap and, you know, just chill, but, you know, we're, 
kind of, yeah, it, it's, it's it, a real it, situation right now still. So, yeah. um, are you comfortable being out and about in Toronto, going to places that you normally would like to go, or is this um, extra security, extra precaution? Well, you know, I think no matter who or what you are, whether you have situations or not, you have to mind what you're doing. You get what I mean? I do it. Yep. You, you can't be loose. And I think that goes for, for anybody, you know. With, with we, you know, there is lines, invisible lines drawn on the street where certain men don't cross, some men don't come around here, and some men don't go around there. You get what I mean? I do it. Yeah. So, you know, it's some imaginary line that we as youths kind of draw against each other for some reason, I don't know, you know, and like I said, it's the plight of us first set of immigrant kids from immigrant parents that came here and we're growing up for the first time in this thing. And, you know, we kind of, we kind of pigeonholed ourselves with a lot of things still, this street life thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. I get that. And um, I, I, as an air of mystique, I think we'll get to uh, in some of my, a couple of my later questions, but you know, I thought it was so um, amazing and mysterious watching you in the video for Extendo, um, just like all your other videos. Why, why the decision to go with the dreads over the face uh, the whole time? Uh, the money question. This, this is the money one. Well, yes. no, no face, no case is one. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. I don't, uh, I'm not about the, um, I know enough people, they like to, you know, I, I don't really care about the the, the, the the minuscule amount of fame that I have. Let me not toot no horn or nothing, you get me? I, I don't care about like showing my face or people recognizing me and things like that. And probably bigger important, um, there's enough issues is going on out here on the street right now. You get me? And enough of my friend them are mixed up in enough things. And, you know, I don't want to bring no attention or no negative harm to anybody because I'm pursuing music on top of certain things. You get what me, I I got and you, bro. The boy them is really kicking off doors down here and the app them really is licking down and shooting people down here. You get what I mean, David? Yes. You can't Google that, you know what I mean? So, you know, this this is just a, re a reflection of what it really is being in the mix and still trying to rap. You get me? It's not face thing. You get so, me? I, I, uh, and I'm guessing there's no way you're going to show us your face right here. Is that correct? No. With no disrespect. Um, okay. I'm just looking at my thing right now. It's telling me my meeting's going to end in 10 minutes, but that's probably because I just messed this thing up. But don't worry about it. Uh, if it yeah. does, if it does, we'll just link it back up. So how do I know it's really you? <laughs> there you go. That's the best thing in the world, fam. How do, how do I know? It I'm, is. I'm, it is. On everything. It is. Okay. So I'm, I'm taking your word for it that this is Falcon Outlaw. A hundred thousand percent, fam. Okay. Is your driver's license like looking like this? <laughs> um, my driver's license. <laughs> That's how you take your driver's I'm just going to say, I'm going to go with, yeah. Hey, will, will, will the world ever see your face? Um... No, if I can help it. Gotcha. No. So never. Okay. Um, so you got a lot of, I, I noticed you got a lot of work out there right now. Um, a lot of music, um, but what's the tension is considered your debut album. Is that right? Yeah. EP. Yeah, man. Okay, so um, it's a great album. First of all, I recommend this album. Y'all got to go listen to West Detention. I listened to it. It's the real deal. I put my stamp on it. 
I put my stamp on it. And like I say every other time, I recommend the album. If you think I'm lying, because this man is sitting here in front of me, then go listen to the album. And if you got a problem with anything I said about the album, hit me up in the DMs or on IG directly, and we can talk about it. The album is Flames, West Detention. Um, it's very unique in the current landscape. On the song Nine to Five, you talk mm. about a man straddling the fence, um, a guy trying to do the right thing in life with his nine to five but he's got one foot in the streets. Is that your story or are you just expressing a broader understanding? Um, it's more a thing where there's, um, yeah, like you said, you know, there's people out there who strictly are onto their nine to five, which is a great thing. You get me? Yeah. I make sure I that out loud. That's a great thing. That's why I put it right at the front of the album, you know, and then there's some people who nine to five and they have, one their elbow in the street and there are some people who don't even look at nine to five and they're a hundred percent in the street you know and the way i wanted to relay them to that it's like i know with the music people can get caught up just being on the bravado thing all at the time you know and i wanted to make sure i don't come off like that and i had to really bring that real thing to it you get me yeah yeah Okay. You know, nine to five sounds like, I just want to say, it sounds like uh, the dope man soundtrack for cooking and bagging. So I'm just, that's my description of what that song sounds like. It's, it's the perfect song for when you, when you got to do that work, if you are in that field. Um, but if you're not, it's still good music. A lot of people talk about um, the shower posse. Uh, like they really don't know what it is. I know it's scary, um, but that's about it. I just, that's all I know. Uh, do you happen to know anything? And you don't have to really answer this if you don't want to. You don't need any, anything about this, or should I just shut the fuck up right now before shit get tricky? You know, you're a very wise man, fam. You know. So he's saying, "Shut the fuck up before things get tricky." Moving along, I'm assuming uh, that's your pick on the front of West Detention. Um, and you yeah. said you spent. Well, how long did you spend there? Uh, um, fuck, about two and a half years, and then I got shipped out to a next spot. Wow, wow! And so, did you it's go a, to? Did, did you, and this was all juvenile time. Yeah, it's a tragedy. It's fucked up, you know. But that's why I try to bring light out of that dark situation by with the album thing and kind of, you know, yeah. So, still pimp. That's another standout uh, for me. Great fucking song. Did you have experience in that game? Yeah, when I was a youth. The way I laid out the album, it was like telling a story from right before I got locked up all the way to when I dropped the album. Each song kind of holds a section of my life. So, you know, 9 to 5 was like, you know, you work, you get caught up in the street, bad shit happened, you know? Second song, Still Pimp, where you just mentioned, is when I came back out on the road now as an older youth, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you kind of soak up what's going on around you. And a lot of my homeboys was in that game. So, you know, show me who you, your friends are and I tell you who you are. You get me? One yeah. of those things end up falling in to that lane for, for that time being, you know? Yeah. Okay. Um what was the idea of having uh, that extended conversation between the pimp and the hoe at the end of the song? What was what? Say, say that again. What was the idea uh, of oh. having the, the pimp talking to the It's a whole conversation there at the end where the pimp is talking to the hoe. What, right. what, what did you want to project? What was the message you were sending out with that long monologue there, that conversation? I wanted to show, I wanted to show that, like, you know, enough people out here kind of relay their thing from movies and videos and thing they don't really know what is what you get me yeah so as the way it goes them kind of the way the industry go them kind of um shine a bright pretty jewel up iced out light on the pimp game you get me yeah but in all actuality it's not like that you get me? Mm -hmm. And that convo at the end was to kind of snap 
people into reality like this is a dark, evil world. Even though it's been portrayed to everybody like, yeah, yo, yo, yo. It's a dark, evil world. So I wanted to make them hear a real conversation, argument, I should say, between pimps and, and hoes. You get me? And yeah, so did you have in call services or out call services? Uh huh. Did you have in call or out call? So it's in call when is they yeah, got yeah, the crib yeah. in the oh you so you know what yeah. did you have in call or out call? Back then it was just um either the road thing or out call thing. Oh, so you was yeah. on the road or out out call? Okay, all right. Road, uh, that's you know like when when you're in the, in the street you have your hand mixed up in everything so you're trying to do everything at once you know. Um, but, do you ever have but, to do you have to go? Have you ever had to go in and correct the situation because uh, customer did not act properly? Everybody, I think, has to deal with that. Everybody has to deal with that. It's it's part of the game, you know. Yeah. But what I would have been better off being a brain surgeon. I tell you that. Yes, and wouldn't we all? Wouldn't we all? Mom, yeah. I tried, Mama. Uh, I'm yeah. trying to get <laughs> my mom is still out here uh, kicking and raising hell. Mom, I'm still I'm still trying. So um, you are from Toronto, right? So um, what's your fa what's your favorite Justin Bieber song? What? Your who's favorite? that? Fam? Who's that? You don't know who Justin Bieber is? Yo, who's that, fam? <laughs> what? Hey, listen, that joint called Yummy Go Hard. You can, Falcon, you can't tell me that Yummy don't go hard. You heard Yummy before. I don't even know who that is from. I don't even know who that is from. That sounds like some new weed or something that they have out there. It's the Justin Bieber strain. It's called Yummy. He won't, hey, y'all, he won't, he won't cop to it. He don't even know who that guy is. Um, you know, we talked about how you stretch the genres uh, of the music right now. Yeah. And, um, and we talked about Mob Deep. Who are some of your other influences musically? Um, Ninja Man, Super Cat, Bojo, Bojo Bantan, um, Beanie Man, Bounty Killer, Mob Deep, uh, for Big Pun, Big L. Yeah. Um, um, fuck so much. Biggie Smalls, Tupac. Uh -huh. Yeah. Andre 3000. Um, wow. So, okay. so much, you know? A lot of great influences there. I, I co-sign everybody that you just got done naming. Uh, what the hell was the idea behind the song Iron Man Suit? I mean, I get the message. Uh, right. You're ripping hard body on this one. Uh, but why the title Iron Man Suit? Is it because you say on the song you're bulletproof from the floor to the roof? Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, you, you get me? It's kind of like, yo, you know, almost like, yo, I'm good out here. So it's like, yo, my money's straight. I look, to, I look to my left. Yo, my girl's straight. I look to my right. Yo, my youths are straight. Iron Man Suit. Yo, I have the... Mm -hmm. With me, anywhere I go, my car is straight, Iron Man suit. You know, it's kind of like, yo, I'm yeah. straight up. That's basically the thing, yo, I'm, not, I'm good out here. You get me? Iron Man suit. The video is so dope, too. Listen, y'all got to go check this song out. Um, yeah. Iron Man suit is so dope, and it's so different. Believe me when I tell you, when y'all go find this song, you're not going to be disappointed. You're going to be thanking me that I sent you to this video. Um, and something that I... Are all your videos now at night? Like, is, every, is everything happening at night for you? Yeah, you know, it's, um, you know, I, I guess it's, it, it's part, of, part of the thing, you know, because most of my um, memories and thing was, was at nighttime. Most of running around was nighttime, you know? Yeah. So I'm trying to keep it as authentic for myself and for anybody watching that this is what it is. So 
people ask questions like that, I'm not stuttering. Oh, it was the this director's idea, or I have to make something up, you know? I'm trying to keep everything as authentic as I can. So when I get asked questions like that, yeah. I have that set speed. But like I said, my life has been probably circled around more night than daylight. You get me? Got you. Hot, hot gun on the waist is another epic sounding joint uh, from Camouflage Monk. Shout out to right. Camouflage Monk. First, how did you two connect? Um, we link up through my brother that owns High Heat Records with me, Jason Banks. He used to go over to Buffalo a lot of times, see? Yeah. So, and up link, him have, you know, my homeboy has people on there and things. So, he ended up link with Monk and Monk come up at Canada and him the Monk's we and thing and, you know, one thing lead to a next, you know? You're in the music game, middle music. You need to sort out a thing, you know? Right. You know, and him get free here what we are though. So it's like said the man no say it's not no foolishness, you know what I mean? It's like yeah, yeah man, I could do a thing, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, um, man. And secondly, it, it seems like a concerted effort to match these over the top um epic beats to the persona that you're putting out there right now. Do you uh do you is that you wanted to paint that particular uh picture? Did you come up with that on your own, or is that a collaborative effort between you and Camouflage Monk? Um, you can say at the early parts, it was collaborative because, you know, he drawed out the beats that he thought that was like, yo, this is the thing, you know? Yeah. And I had to put my spin on it. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, man. Um, I mean, I hate to go back to the hair, but do you walk into the Waffle House like that? For the hair, <laughs> we don't got no Waffle House up here, fam. Or Tim Tim Hortons. What do you know about Tim Hortons, fam? Oh, I know all about Tim Hortons. I've been up in there quite a few times. Yes, yeah. they, got the dope, they got the dope coffee, the donuts, and all that. Yes, I crossed the border over there. I was uh, I was uh, I was up in uh, is it called Sarnia? Is that a place up there? Yeah, man. Yeah, I was up there before. Yeah, that's OT. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Um, uh, Sound like you, 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 you uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll be, I'll be around what sometimes. Hey, know what that mean, nigga? <laughs> hey, do you have any? You have any, You have any kids? Yeah. Okay. Do you go to parent teacher conference like that? With the um, you know, no, I can't do it. Okay. Okay. No, like so. Peep this. On the road, it's not like this. I would walk by you, and you wouldn't know it's me walking by you. Yo, that's the fucked up part. And that's what it is in life for me. You get me? Yes. Nobody knows who I am except probably 30 people. Other than that, nobody knows who I am. I can walk and stand behind, beside anybody, and they wouldn't know who's the one, what's what. They wouldn't know till it's too late. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yo, yo, peep this. Real quick. A man uh, see me. I was wearing some of my merch. See him? And I was on the road. And a man was like, yo, where you get that? Yo, I know, I know those youths, yo, that youth's sick. And I'm like, yeah, 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 I just bought it off of their thing still, Ray, Ray, Ray. I'm like, oh, okay, respect and walk. He didn't even know that was me he was talking to. You get me? Oh, man. I hope yeah. he see this. I hope he see this uh, interview and get sick to his stuff. <laughs> Speaking of the merch, I like what you rocking. You know, every time I come on the show, I say, yo, send me some merch so I'll rock it on the show. Some people do, some people don't. So I'm just putting that out there in that atmosphere. You've been dropping a lot this year. A lot of videos, right. a lot of songs. What's the idea behind this aggressive push? Uh, are you just you just tired of waiting or are you trying to shock the system? Um, you know, from, I feel like you know, I feel like everybody has their attention, right? And this game, this new age of boom bop exists before I even come on the scene. You get me? So I'm not going to get my just do, you know, hiding in the background, you know? Yeah. I have to take my spot. None of these other rappers are going to come give it to me. 
none of the fans are going to drop one song and they're like, okay, yeah, you're the greatest. I have to take my spot. I have to earn my spot. So that's what I'm doing. I'm earning my spot on my rise, climbing this ladder to see how far up it goes. You get me? So yeah. Yeah. basically just beating the metal while it's hot. Listen, I, I, you're doing a great job at it. Um, when I first discover somebody, what happened is I will, I'll click a couple videos, a couple songs, and I'll be like, oh, this is hot. And then, you know, YouTube will start messing with your algorithm, right? Mm -hmm. It'll start putting these people up in your face. And so you will come up on my screen and I'll go, you know what? This can't be that good. And I click it and I'll be like, holy shit. Like, listen, the song, what's the name of the song? Yoda? What is yeah. it called? Young Yoda. Young Yoda. Mm -hmm. Yo, yo, will you be saying, yo, you be saying, because what, what's the what's the chorus? I forget, it's in my head, but I can't, I don't want to mess up your lyrics. Will you it's tell like, me, what you did you say in the song? You think you're a Jedi, you know, but, you know, you like, you bleed just like me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because. It is it, it's, it's, it's a thing like I feel like a lot of youths feel like they're untouchable and Ray, 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 and blah, 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 and thing, you know? But sometimes you have to remind people, say, fam, you're human exactly like I'm human. You get me? Yes. yes. You can go buy a machine the same way I can go buy a machine. You can ball up your fist. And throw the thing just like I can throw the thing. It does. It was more of a talk to some people who feel like they're the only ones that can punch somebody. They're the only ones that can pull out a thing, or they're the only. One. You, you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's such a great song, um, and like I say, as I go through the my algorithm, you pop up, and I, I said, "This can't be good." I click it. And, I'm like, damn, this dude keep on hitting these home runs. Um, the song. You got a, a few songs with this guy, but what's the name of it? With Lord Juco. I was just looking uh, at uh, Big Up Juco. Blah, blah, blah. Big Up Juco. I mean. Yeah, Juco is, uh, I love what he's doing right now. I just now got hip to him, but y'all did a, a, a cut together that, uh, that I was listening to last night. Um, and you also did some work with Daniel's son, Asan Eastwood, um, big, Cypher big. Soze. Big. Those guys are big. So th these youths are the man's and that's out here. Seeing these guys been in this thing be before me. You get me? And um, they shown me nothing but respect for my come on the scene. You get what me? I do it. And these guys are like going doing their thing. They have their fan base. They have their thing already. So the love those youths showed me was a blessing for me. You get me? Absolutely. Yeah, man. Big them up, man. To the max. What is your guilty pleasure? So we all got these songs that nobody would expect us to listen to in our own private time. What is a song that nobody, what's, what's music or artist or a song that nobody would expect you, Falcon Outlaw, to be listening to? Um, I like listening to, um, you know, old school R&B and thing. Okay. I, I like R&B stuff. You got me? My guilty pleasure is Madonna. Whoa. Uh, also, Katy Perry. I fuck with the Katy Perry. Michael Buble. Oh. People will not know I mess with the Michael Buble. I do like the Michael Buble. That's, that's pimp music. Yes. Tell me, people People don't know. Michael Buble is pimp music. It you is. Heard, uh, you heard about. it here first. Hey, what, what does your dream year look like? Let's say it's going into 2021. What would you like to see happen um, for your career uh, going forward? No more COVID. Yes. Uh, and like people my music reaching as much people as it can reach you get me yeah and people not taking it at book face value understanding that i'm actually talking about something and saying something you know because i know there's a lot of people coming out right now and doing their thing and it kind of gets washed over you know I, but i love that people stop and really listen to what I'm saying, you know, and yeah. take it, you know. Oh, we're gonna try to help out with that because I think the music is important. Um, I think, like I said, is genre shifting, 
it's powerful, it's epic, it's lyrical, it's grimy, it's all those things that we love and the shit that we celebrate here on the Mike Power Show. So I would hope that uh, as people are watching this particular interview, that right after you get done with this, you go out and you you cop the merch, the mm -hmm. music, look at mm -hmm. the videos of what this man is putting out right now. Um, because when you when we complain about all the bullshit that's going on, it's all the same garbage that's getting pushed to the forefront. We have to understand, people, it's not just the Griselda and X, Y, and Z. It's these people that's a little bit of outliers that's now coming to the forefront. When we hear it and we love it, we got to push it hard as hell. You got to go listen to it and then turn your people on to it right after you do that. That's how we do it over here. Um, what's the thing that makes you feel the most honorable about yourself? Um, so you're being your best self when you're doing what? Um, being a father. Absolutely. That's the thing I think I actually got down pack. Well, close enough, because nothing is perfect if something's perfect it's that's some devil thing you know so nothing is perfect but i think my closest point of perfection would be being a father you get me Fantastic. because yeah i promote and push and force my youths even i talk to my bridging them about it not for them not to walk the same road that we walk because this road is just heartache and pain and Last friends, early death, jailhouse, and fuckery, you know? Yeah. 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 And thank you for that. Um, my last question here, uh, how should the industry view you, your peers? Um, what is it that your peers should be aware of as it pertains to Falcon Outlaw? Um, I just want them to say that, you know, I'm different and I'm being myself i'm not trying to copy anybody's style or anything i'm being myself and as the time goes it's gonna be even more original you know i'm constantly recording and i'm pushing myself to be as original in the guidelines of hip-hop but remaining original and authentic to who i am so it's not like you go listen to other artists and you come to me and you'd be like, ah, oh, I listened to enough people today. You know, when you come in here, it's a different thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. You know? And you can get stuck real easy on your algorithm messing around with some Falcon Outlaw. Believe me. If you do My. what I do, you just start clicking random videos and see what happens. It's, it's a lot of, of dope music out there. Um, and as we wind down the show, I just want to thank... Uh, you, Falcon and Outlaw, for coming onto the platform and having this uh, important conversation with me. Um, yeah, man. I wish you nothing but uh, peace, blessings, and success going forward, sir. Yeah, man. And, um, you know, respect for having me on here and what you're doing. I don't know if anybody tell you already. What you're doing is a big thing. You're shining a huge light where on the shadows where the light's not shining right now. So... What you're doing is a big thing you're doing. And I won't forget you doing this interview for me at this stage. You get what I'm at, David? And make sure to tell everybody to vote and try and change up the thing because I know you guys in the States are going through a lot of fuckery with the police, them, and the government, you know? So, yes. you know, you know the outlaw I'm watching and I have your guys back. I'm, I'm, I'm with the people. I see what you guys are going through. Just fight through and try and make change. You get me? And survive. Thank and make, you. And make sure if you're in the street, you have the thing with you. See? Don't get caught slipping. Because the devil's in everybody. You got me? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and thank you for saying those things that you said about me. I'm, I'm humbled by the praise, and I, I do certainly uh, appreciate you saying that about me as we close down the show. Once again, this was Falcon Outlaw. Thank you all for connecting with me. Now go connect with each other. As always, I'm Mike Powers. Uh -oh. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs>